Welcome to the Headstrong Podcast. We are so excited to be here today. This is going to be an, an engaging conversation with one of our MLAs and, of course, with Pamela Morgan, who we always love talking to. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Connie. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about our special guest today. I would love to. You know, we're really honored to have RJ join us today. Um, I'm going to let maybe RJ tell us a little bit more of his history, but one of the favorite things I like about RJ is he has a great quote that he says, he doesn't just live in Highwood, his life is in Highwood. And being a heart-centered leader like RJ and, and really uh, supporting us at Headstrong in bringing this back home for our entrepreneurs, I just can't say enough that it's, it's been such a great labor of love. So I'm going to pass a little bit on to RJ uh, um, regarding how we started this together. Thank you so much, Pam. And, and first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me on. Um, you've put a lot of work. Your entire team has put so much incredible work behind Headstrong. It's great to see it launching off now in the Highwood region. Um, you know, it's, it's really important that we continue to have the conversation about mental health and wellness and the impacts of our current situation in the province and, and how much it's having on uh, business leaders, uh, community leaders, um, entrepreneurs, job creators across the entire province, our ranchers, our farmers, um, you know, and, and be able to continue to have that conversation because I've always said uh, the ability to be able to talk about mental wellness is is one of the principal first steps in being able to overcome it. Um, I myself was a, um, a business owner, a shareholder within a construction company um, for over a decade uh, prior to becoming a politician. And uh, you know, I, I know that even at, in good times, um, the stress that it had on my life, both personally and my family was excessive. Um, you know, I did see some economic downturns too as well that heightened that situation. You know, I, I tell the story about uh, the one time driving down Deerfoot Trail where my phone, I threw my phone out the window and ended up pulling off the side of the road and sitting there until a, uh, a police officer came up and pulled behind me and I was just, I was lost. It was the excessive pressure that I was feeling the responsibility of all my employees and everything that was going on. And, and I can only imagine at this point in time, the incredible um, pressures that are coming upon our business um, owners, entrepreneurs, job creators across this province. Uh, what they're seeing right now, I, I can only imagine. Um, so what you're doing right now, I think is critically important. And uh, I'm just really happy to be here today and hopefully be able to answer some questions, uh, both as your MLA for Highwood um, and also as a previous business owner and as well be able to, uh, you know, talk about, you know, how this came to be. I mean, Pamela, this was a vision of yours. I think it, uh, it has, it's brought a little bit of a, um, I don't want to say a narrow focus because it's an incredibly broad focus that is centered around um, job creators and entrepreneurs and business owners, ranchers and farmers. And I bring ranchers and farmers into the conversation because people forget that these are large, uh, medium and large businesses. They're business operators. So it's great that we have a chance to be able to uh, talk about the stigma of mental health and wellness. I'm incredibly proud to be a part of a government that actually for the first time and one of the, we're the first province to have a minister dedicated to mental health and wellness. And I think that's uh, important that we, we um, you know, prioritize in that manner as we move forward. So thank you again for having me here today. And uh, I look forward to the conversation. Thanks, RJ. And thanks for being vulnerable and sharing a little bit of your story on, on times of stress and, and making yourself so relatable. One of the things that makes me so proud of Headstrong is it's a grassroots initiative and it was founded on um, in the hearts of entrepreneurs. So everybody who's attached to this program are entrepreneurs. So we know what it looks like, you know, and, and again, back to you being an entrepreneur yourself and, and part of, a part of this community. Can you maybe talk a little bit to what you're seeing happening right now uh, through this pandemic? 
Well, out of everything right now, I think uh, one of the um, one of the struggles is, of course, the fact that we don't have the same social interactions that we're used to. Um, you know, everything has moved uh, very much online. Uh, people are more focused, I think, on social media media than we have ever in the past. I've actually been a little critical of media because of that, because um, I don't want to say it's sensationalized because it's not. COVID is COVID is a thing, you know, like is a real thing, and we're seeing the impacts. But the the way that they go about uh, reporting around some of the situations, it, it creates a heightened sense of anxiety, and and even social media itself. Uh, I know for myself personally, uh, what I've seen is the environment in social media has become very um, almost toxic in nature and in some manners. And uh, I know personally myself, I've had to uh, make a very concerted effort to take a break, get away, try to focus on on physical wellness as well, which helps uh, alleviate a lot of my mental stress, um, which has become even more difficult. So, um, you know, it's from the conversations that I'm having with most of the business owners um, that have approached me, um, some of the a lot of the restrictions um and a lot of the um just the overall economic impact of supply and demand even the effects to the supply chain itself have hindered businesses to a point where um they're getting into a point where you know some of these business owners that have invested the last decades into building their business have now had to fork all of their life savings uh into their businesses I think a lot of people that have never owned a business um, fail to understand that many of these business owners, their homes are attached to their businesses. Their personal financial wellness is on the line here. And this applies to their entire family as well. And, and that's, that's the stress that comes down on them every day when they're sitting there. They don't have anybody to fall back on to but themselves. And with that, um, you know, there's the other consideration that I know as a business owner, my employees were my family. They were the lifeblood of my business. Without them, I was not successful. Um, I did everything to take care of my employees. I, I considered them to be a part of my family. And I know most of our um, business owners within this community treat it um, very similar. So the additional stress of knowing that the loss of their business or the impacts to their business because of restrictions or having to do layoffs are directly impacting those families that have been a part of their business, which is a part of their business family. So um, yeah, definitely uh, very, I, I mean, I've seen and had phone calls of pure desperation. So you can see the impacts that it's having overall on our community right now. RJ, you clearly, have so much empathy and passion for, you know, Albertans who are struggling, rural entrepreneurs. I mean, this really shines through. And I just want to thank you so much for what we see as clear dedication. I mean, even coming behind the Headstrong program, being such an advocate, being somebody who has really pushed this forward. You know, um, you've brought up such important points and how people are so connected to business, what would you say to these business owners listening who are feeling exactly what you just described? What would you say to them in this moment of lockdown and quarantine and all of these uh, COVID where, where we're at, like from a government point of view, what would you say to these business owners? You know, I, I think out of anything, I'm not going to speak from a government angle right now. I'm going to speak from a personal level as a private business owner myself in saying the fact that um, don't be afraid to talk about it. Uh, you're not alone. There's so many other people that are feeling the same effects and we have to get rid of the stigma about not talking about it. it it's time that we do speak to this and that we share how we feel with each other and we find those people to be, that we feel comfortable in talking about it too. Um, with that, as your MLA, I'm, I'm here to fight and advocate for you. Um, I know that a lot of the things that we've done have impacted you. I, I feel that every day. I, I carry the stress and the weight of that every day I wake up. And 
I'm here to push harder and faster to make sure we do better because I, we have to do better. We have to do better as a government. We have to get things moving forward quicker and faster. I always feel it's, it's fair to say that we can do better. And I know my colleagues feel the same way. So, um, you know, that would be my comment on a government level, but overall overarching, we got to continue to have this conversation for those people that are feeling that strain and stress, reach out. Um, there's a lot of great people in our community here to help and, and Headstrong is, is starting down that path of creating that infrastructure and, and that base for people to, to have a center point to come to, to be able to have that conversation. And, you know, podcasts like this and, and what you're doing right now to be able to get rid of that stigma is, is I think crucial because it's, it starts with a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I really appreciate you coming at it from a personal first and then, and then uh, from a government that really makes you very relatable and, uh, you know, very trustworthy. Uh, Pamela, you know, you and you and RJ have have really worked very hard at getting the Headstrong program up and running. I'm wondering if you both, uh, you know, whoever wants to start, Tell us a little bit about the behind the scenes of getting this program off the ground. Well, I, you know, RJ and I, we've had a long relationship, and, you know, and a very positive relationship, which has supported me uh, knocking on his door, calling him, texting him, <laughs> asking for favors. And, and just really, again, you know, to, to echo what RJ is saying, is having that conversation and starting with those first steps. And I know a lot of people know already, you know, kind of where my heart is behind Headstrong and what that looks like for me. I'd like to give RJ an opportunity to kind of maybe hurt his perspective. We haven't really sat down and talked about what I put him through to get us here today. So uh, I would love to hear a little bit of his feedback. Well, I, I, I first want to state um, that there is an incredible amount of work that went into this and, and thought that went into this uh, by Pamela. So when she first originally approached me and sat down and, and, and came up with the concept, uh, as a government, we were just in the principal steps of, of rolling out an additional grant funding stream for new mental health initiatives to be able to um, deal with a lot of uh, the strain and stress that was happening um, from due to the economic collapse, uh, the oil price war combined with COVID and everything that was happening, uh, we you know there was a lot of foresight knowing that there was going to be an impact on our province. Uh, so they were looking to get this grant funding stream in, and when Pam came to me, it just kind of clicked. And she had this uh, very unique idea of, of focusing and centering it around businesses and business owners. And I, I guess with me that just resonated because I used to be a business owner. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it. And, and I felt a lot of stress. There was a lot of impact on my family negatively. And it took me years uh, to be able to overcome that. Um, the strain and stress, I, I know uh, Leanne, my wife, will comment to it. Even my kids will comment to it. And I had to be able to engage with conversations with other people to be able to get through that and find a way to be able to cope with it. So when, when, she, when it was brought to my attention, I, I just, I, I felt that I, I saw the benefit to this. And, and having this as a, um, you know, a startup in Highwood to be able to move forward, I, I thought it was something that also would be emulated by a lot of other people across the province. I, I think it's going to be hugely successful moving forward. Um, so with that, uh, basically, um, Pamela and her entire team put in all the legwork. And I, I just continued to advocate on behalf of it. Um, you know, I work with ministers. I want to make sure that we get um, initiatives moving forward that are going to have a positive impact on our community. I'm a part of uh, a lot of uh, local charities and supporting them and also some other charities uh, internationally. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm always kind of drawn to be able to support uh, initiatives like this. So I just uh, do as I always do when somebody comes up with a great idea in Highwood is 
um, to represent and make sure I'm up there in Edmonton and talking to the ministers and showing them the importance of some of these great initiatives and ideas that are led by many of our community members here in Highwood. So this to me was a, a huge honor, but uh, really this comes down to all the hard work put in to, uh, by Pamela and her team. So. And I just, and I just do want to call out uh, my team. So Wellness Innovate and, and Connie and Cynthia and Abe, they've been such a huge contribution. They're really the brains behind this, if I can say that, and, and bringing this all, uh, you know, when you, you have like-minded individuals, great things can happen. You know, I, I speak to uh, my theory uh, of the power of one, and it only takes one person. And our ripple effect, I'm already feeling that in such a short amount of time with this program. And, and I'm wishing and hoping for the success that it could bring. Specifically, if I can be selfish, uh, two rural communities and in, in our area, uh, I know I'll speak for RJ as well as myself, our heart and souls live in this community. And it's so important that uh, we help out in every aspect that we can. And this is just really one more way. And in, the, in re reference to mental health, and if I can call out men in mental health, this is at the top of, of the scale for me. Um, and again, if I can just kind of get you to look into my mind's view right now, I want to be able to talk to the one, the one farmer out on his combine doing harvest by himself and not knowing how he's going to get through this. And that's how I wake up every morning thinking about this one guy that he's going to hear us and we're going to let him know that there is hope. Wow, that's so powerful, Pamela. That power of one has impacted me personally, your message. And, and also, you know, really thinking about who this is reaching, who Headstrong is for. And, you know, you mentioned, both of you have mentioned stigma. And I think about, you know, some of my close relatives are, you know, rural Albertans. And, you know, what rural Albertans we get are done. We pull up our bootstraps. We don't have time to think about emotions and, and what's going wrong. Like we we just push through. And as, as awesome and as admirable as that can be, um, it can also really hinder. And RJ, I was hearing in your story a little bit about how you've been there, you felt those pressures. And I'm just wondering if if you could speak to stigma and, and that person that is is just thinking to themselves. I don't share. I don't want to share. Um, it's not manly to share. It's not, it's, not, it's not whatever fill in the blank to share. What would you say to that person? You know, I, I, I would say that, um, you know, it is, it, it's all about that stigma as, you know, when you get that whole, you grow up that way, especially as a man, you know, it's, it's suck it up power through it, you know, stop whining, quit complaining, you know, and we're stubborn. And in a lot of ways, so many ways, um, you know, it's to our own hindrance when we sit there, um, you know, not speaking to it. We see that somehow as men, we see it as weakness and, and we don't have that conversation. And uh, I think that was one of my um, toughest hurdles to overcome was being able to, you uh, you know, when I spoke about it, I, I felt incredibly vulnerable and being okay with, with that feeling was probably one of the uh, toughest things for me to overcome. And also finding, um, you know, just the ability that it's okay to be vulnerable. Actually, there's strength, there's huge strength behind that. Um, so to those individuals that feel, that are feeling it and feeling uncomfortable to speak it, to it, um, you know, find, find the person that you feel comfortable with and, and re remember that there's strength in being vulnerable and speaking to it. And especially right now, you know, as everyone is feeling something, you know, I don't think it would uh, throw anybody off if, if we shared and if we were struggling. I think people understand right now more than ever. And that's what I love about the Headstrong program. You know, it's creating a structure of safe community. Uh, one of the things that we've discovered at Wellness Innovate is that, you know, there has to be this level 
of safety that somebody feels psychologically in order to share. If they feel like they're going to be threatened or judged in any way, people shut down. And so Pamela's done such a wonderful job of creating structure around this program where it is safe. What is shared in, in say, the group coaching sessions? You know, these are, these are private things and will be treated delicately and with respect and even the one-on-one. -on -one. I wonder, Pamela, if you could share a little bit about, you know, what these group sessions are, are going to be like, maybe the one-on-one -on -one coaching. What does this support look like for people? So for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's, that's the one I hold near and dear to my heart. So you can have that, that confidential conversation um, to echo what RJ is saying and sit in a vulnerable space and, and know that you're going to be heard and that you have a voice and that there's resources. One of my, uh, if I can say one of my personal struggles right now in trendy words is, or trends, is it's okay to not be okay, which is absolutely true. My struggle with that statement is there's nothing beyond that. We need to give a resource. We need to let people know it's okay to not be okay, but this is the way to navigate through it. And a program like this is, is what I'm hoping will, will be that resource for people to have those conversations and, uh, and not just for themselves, but for their families and husbands and wives and children. And the purpose of this program is to support the community as a whole. So that's employees, that's entrepreneurs. I know we have some great business leaders joining us today. And, and they have a wide uh, ripple effect within the community. And for them to reach out to other peers and colleagues and say, you know what, just reach out to Headstrong and they're gonna offer you the support that you need to have real conversations, raw conversations. This isn't gonna be pretty, and I'm not, this is not about a, making it pretty. This is about getting ourselves into a proactive instead of a reactive state that we're currently in, where we can change the stigma and, and offer the support that we need. Yeah, I love that. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible, and we're just beginning. So we want to encourage everyone to check out headstrongprogram.com. Again, headstrongprogram.com. Um, we're on all social media handles, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Becoming Headstrong. And I just want to thank you so much, um, uh, RJ and both Pamela, for coming on here, sharing your heart, sharing such uh, real vulnerable stories with us and just getting to the heart of things. So thank you so much again. And thank you to everyone who listened in and we encourage you to tune in to our next episode coming out soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you for doing this. Thank you.